Success, money, happiness, fame, and power. For those who dream is to be recognized in their own lifetime, fundamental physics is not the best choice of career. Over 2,000 years ago, the Greek philosopher Democritus speculated that matter, instead of arising from combinations of earth, air, fire, and water, was built from tiny indivisible constituents called atoms. These atoms would be small, fundamental, and indestructible. And he hypothesized that such atoms would be the basic ingredients of all the objects and matters that we see around us. It's called the atomic hypothesis. In time, this did turn out to be true, but not until 60 generations after Democritus had died and his own atoms had been laid to rest within the warm sun-baked Mediterranean soil. Atoms as matter's building blocks, and black holes as compact as astrophysical objects. To this, we can perhaps add even a more revolutionary idea. An idea first suggested by Theodore Kaluza in the early 1920s. This is the idea that there are extra, and yet, undiscovered dimensions to space. Additionally, hidden directions beyond up, down, and across X, Y, and Z. Directions we have never yet been able to perceive. But what would this mean? Where would such dimensions exist? And what would they look like? And how would we ever be able to detect them? The Breakthrough on Extra Dimensions This story starts in 1916, in the midst of the largest and bloodiest war the world has ever seen. While this meat grinder ate up the youth of Europe, the thoughts of Albert Einstein were higher. He finally succeeded and formulated his theory. This turned gravity into the curved geometry of four dimensions. It was a beautiful theory, but a hard one to understand. One of the physicists grappling with this remarkable theory was Theodore Kaluza. He asked himself a striking question. What would happen if Einstein's equations were instead written out for five dimensions instead of the conventional three dimensions and one time dimension. It surely cannot be of any relevance to the actual physical world that we live in, unless Kaluza argued the extra dimension was so small as to render it unobservable. He had found something stunning, gravity in four dimensions in a limit of one invisibly tiny extra dimension was equivalent to gravity in three dimensions, plus an electromagnetic force. This result was amazing. It was deep, it was striking, and almost no one cared. Not then, and not for decades afterwards. Theory of Strings In 1984, during a conference, two of the physicists, Michael Green and John Schwartz, presented their solution to a problem that was widely believed to render extra dimensions physically impossible. String theory has a justified reputation as a difficult and complex subject. Take the equations that describe a one-dimensional object under tension. Think a violin string or a cracking whip. Promote these equations to a relativistic limit, where the ends move at the speed of light itself. Finally, take the quantum mechanical version of these equations, then study them, and you have the subject known as string theory. But many things about the theory worked surprisingly well. There were odd and unexpected cancellations that looked too good to be simply a coincidence. The problem was one of what are called anomalies. For a whole host of calculations in the quantum theory, probabilities were not adding up to one. But Green and Schwartz discovered a new result called Green-Schwartz anomaly cancellation. As news of their result spread, string theory, a theory which required not one, not two, but six additional dimensions to space, became one of the most popular subjects in theoretical physics. Exploration of Extra Dimensions The physics of extra dimensions was now the subject of an intellectual gold rush. The quest for quantum gravity, a theory of everything that had haunted Einstein on his deathbed, was once again the center of attention. In 1984, Andrew Strominger, and Gary Horowitz were excited because string theorists were building up models of the universe and needed to know whether Calabi-Yau manifolds really existed. 
They are complex, mind-boggling, difficult to comprehend, but still geometries. So what are Calabi Yao manifolds? One of the most interesting and studied examples of possible geometric shapes where the six extra dimensions are called Calabi Yao manifolds. They are not easy to visualize and are topologically complex. A typical Calabi Yao has hundreds and hundreds of the higher dimensional equivalents of holes. But why have these manifolds been studied so much within physics? One reason is that the geometry of these spaces automatically satisfies the equations of Einstein's theory of gravity and general relativity. These equations are one of the deepest and most powerful ideas in all of physics. And so they are expected to be true, not just in the four-dimensional world that we inhabit, but also within any deeper frameworks that would extend our known laws. Relation of atoms with extra dimensions. Atoms exist. Even if we cannot see individual atoms, we can still feel their effects. Every time we touch anything with our hands or sit down on a chair, we feel the effects of atoms. The fact that when we sit down, we do not carry on plunging through the seat of the chair. It is because of the summed effect of billions upon billions upon billions of atoms and the electric interactions between them. So for atoms, we can feel their effects, even if we cannot directly resolve them. If there is a secret geometry to space at the very smallest distance, what effects could this have at larger distances on those unable to resolve the extra dimensions? To understand this, it is worthwhile to consider what a dimension is. We are all familiar with three dimensions. There is one dimension of up and down, and two for moving horizontally. Now we can think of dimensions as the number of labels you have to give to say where an object is, in the way that coordinates a two-dimensional sheet of paper allow you to locate any individual point on that paper. But what about four dimensions, or five, or nine? Who can actually visualize? Where else can we go in our mind beyond up, down, and north, south, east, west? It is hard to even conceive of what extra dimensions would mean. One way to have a sense of this is to imagine an ant walking along the vine, either forward or backwards. The surface of the vine certainly has two dimensions, but the insect is still too large to treat the vine as having more than just one linear dimension. In truth, the surface of the vine has two dimensions, but to a big enough insect, there is effectively only one single dimension. So perhaps for us, if extra dimensions are small enough, we are simply too big and too clunky to resolve them. Legacy particles. But could there still be a phenomena, like the bottom of the chair, where extra dimensions could manifest their effects, even if we cannot discern their full structure? Well, yes, particles. The mathematics of general relativity tells us that the surviving residue of the extra dimension would be particles. These particles would be the minimal quantum excitation of the extra dimensional geometry. They would be legacies of higher dimensional theory of gravity when viewed from a lower dimension. But can we observe them? Well, one of the most interesting and generic types of such particles called a modulus particle, in their plural, moduli. Such moduli behave like gravity. That is, by far, intrinsically, the weakest of all of the forces. So, how could we detect evidence for this moduli? The answer could lie in their eventual decay. Even though their gravitational strength interactions give them longer lives than other particles, moduli do eventually decay, their mass energy draining away into relativistic standard model particles. One example of such standard model particles, believed but not known to exist, are axions. The decays of moduli could therefore have produced a permanent cosmic background of relativistic axions streaming through the universe. Conclusion The idea remains tantalizing, but still theoretical. Perhaps extra dimensions really exist, and the only reason we are not able to perceive them is that we are too large and clunky to appreciate that they are there, trying in vain to count sand grains wearing boxing gloves. Perhaps someday, somehow, we may know for certain whether or not they are out there, and whether space itself is much larger 
richer, and stranger than we have ever dreamed. Hope you liked this video. Please let us know what intrigued you the most. Thanks for watching.